Hello and welcome to this portion of the unit. In these videos I will be uh, using the video to expand on some of the central concepts that we are learning in each unit and I will either summarize uh, some of the concepts for you or expand on others and I'll be showing you how to do certain things on uh, your computer by sharing what I'm doing on my computer with you. So let's get directly to it. We are dealing with the definition of computer forensics. Computer forensics is part of digital forensics. Digital forensics is the process of uncovering and interpreting electronic data for use in a court of law. Meaning that all the work that we are doing have to be admissible, have to be accepted in the court. Computer forensics as we said is a branch of digital forensics and we define it as it deals with the preservation, identification, extraction and documentation of computer evidence. So we are preserving the evidence that we have and we are identifying what in it could be used as an evidence and we will extract it in certain cases we'll extract it and export it to be in a, a separate file and document all of the work that we are doing. I have to add here that all of this again have to be done in a way that is admissible in a court of law. Network forensics is another branch of digital forensics and in network forensics the information that we are getting out of it, the output of it, is how a hacker for example could gain access to our network as opposed to the computer forensics which is looking at data that can be retrieved from the computer hard disk or any kind of storage media. There is another field that we call the data recovery which is dealing with recovering data that was deleted by accident, by mistake or lost during any power surge or a server that just crashed. Typically in data recovery we know what we are looking for. In computer forensics usually we are looking for evidence but we are not sure what we are looking for or if we're going to be able to find the data that we are looking for. So this is another difference between computer forensics, network forensics and data recovery. At this point you probably asking yourself where I'm going to get all the knowledge that is needed in order to be a computer forensic investigator and where to start and how to be updated all the time and what are the resources that I will be using. Well, this class is the best start to be in this profession. In order to be successful in this field, you have to know more than one uh, computing platform. If you only used uh, Windows 7 or Windows XP, that is not enough. You have to uh, get yourself used to some other computing platforms like Linux, Mac, or other windows also because sometimes you will find yourself dealing with a Windows 98 or a Windows ME if you remember those. The more platforms that you know the more successful you will be in this profession. However, uh, depending on the environment that you're working on you could be only working on one kind of uh, operating system especially if you are like in a, a corporate environment where the corporate will dictate what is the operating system used. So in those cases, knowing this operating system very well will guarantee that you are successful in your profession. Beside your knowledge uh, about operating system, you should join as many computer user groups as you can and I'll show you some of those. Uh, there are a lot of websites that are specializing in forensics. One of them is the one you can see here. It's the Computer Technology Investigators Network, the CTIN, and you can reach it at www.ctin.org. Go ahead and see what they have in that website. Another website that you can uh, check out is the htcia.org. Uh, this is another website that deals with exchanging information about techniques related to uh, security, cyber security in general, but includes a lot about uh, forensics. All user groups and discussion uh, forums are very very helpful and will keep you updated 
on what is going on on this field. So you should build a network of computer forensics expert. Anybody that you know that is dealing in a certain field of the computers that, that he can be a help for you in cases you are dealing with a problem that you're going to need their help with. Here's an example of a website, the LinkedIn uh, social professional network that you can get uh, uh, membership in groups that are all dealing with computer forensics. You can see here I have the security and defense in depth, the access data, the computer forensics experts, all of these are forums that you can join for free and have updated information all the time about what's going on on the field. Another important kind of uh, websites is those websites that will send you uh, daily news. You will get emails almost daily about things that are happening, about cases, about new technologies. Uh, this website called the DFI News is another great resource. You can get news, you can get articles, tips, blogs, newer products that are used in uh, forensics, and etc. So it's a good idea to have a membership there and to visit this website. The Forensics Focus website is another example. It's a rich, very professional website that also have news, forums, articles, interviews, webinars. All of these are very, very important for you to stay updated and to get the latest on this field of computer forensics. Okay, so let's now look at two different kind of investigations that we will be uh, talking a lot about, but this is just an introduction here. We have two kinds, the public investigations and the private or corporate investigations. These are two fields within computer forensics and are somewhat different, but they have a lot of similarity as well. In the public investigations, or what I call the law enforcement investigations, the Fourth Amendment and the law of search and seizure will protect the rights of all people, including suspects. In the corporate investigation, we don't have something like that. If your company have policy, and if you are presenting a banner on all of your computer system that says that you can monitor and investigate computer system, then you are covered. Private companies and corporations don't have Fourth Amendment. They are governed by their internal policy, a policy that was published to all employees, and probably all employees signed on a document about receiving this policy. However, keep in mind that any investigation that you're doing inside the corporate can also go to the court in the end. Take an example of an employee that was fired for breaking the policy of misuse of the internet, for example. And he is fired and he is then suing the company. The investigation that you did in order to prove that he misused the resources of the company will be used in the court now. So you need still to conduct your investigation in a way that is acceptable in the court.